Hello, my name's Artemis, and it seems that our fine little island nation of ours has grown quite a few uh, stereotypes and standards to really define us as British. And I thought, fuck it, why don't we just delve into all of that and just make kind of like, oh, what actually makes us British? That sounds like a great idea that I can stretch for several episodes. Uh -huh. But yes, I thought we'd kick things off by having a look at the absolute abominable shithole that is UK politics. Ah yes, the wonderful topic of politics, where we separate the left from the right, the Remainers from the Brexiteers, the racists from everybody who isn't over the age of 50. And it seems like our little political system has been pretty fucking odd for quite a long time now. You see, we still have royalty in this country, as I'm sure everybody's aware of all the fucking good it does us. We still have a monarch in power. Yes, the Queen is sitting there on her taxpayer-funded throne doing... What exactly? O occasionally turning up to let Parliament do its thing? Um, a few charitable openings a year? Generally having a face like a smacked ass at any official proceedings she has to be a part of? I mean, fuck it, seems to be working so far, why change it? And of course, with the Queen comes a few princes and princesses, but we try not to focus too much on some of them, because there's uh, oftentimes quite a few things we need to sweep under the rug and forget about. Uh -huh. And these days the younger princes are doing their job pretty well by, you know, marrying attractive commoners and pumping out kids like they're trying to repopulate the colonies from royal stock alone. Anytime there seems to be a slight lull in the country or the general unwashed masses seem to be a little bit too close to realising what a fucking travesty our country is becoming, they roll out another royal wedding or pop out another child and suddenly the peasants are placated, almost as if that was the point all along. And below the monarchy, but actually the ones with the power, is Parliament, which is led by the Prime Minister, who is basically uh, the RK900 to Margaret Thatcher's RK800 in the form of Theresa, I can only keep power by bribing the Irish, May. The actual structure of our government is pretty fucked up. We have the lower house, which is the House of Commons, which is full of the locally elected MPs. So every council and whatnot gets to elect an MP to go to Parliament and be their representative. Just above that, we have the House of Lords, where they're all elected by peerage. Basically, these are a bunch of rich, white, old men, bishops, lords, that sort of thing, who are just rich fuckers who give birth to rich fuckers. They were appointed by the Queen under the advisement of the Prime Minister, so once again, the Queen's got no real power. And then all they really do is sit in the House of Lords and go, yes, or that needs more work to any of the actual laws and work that the House of Commons gives them. They can't stop shit entirely, or, you know, very rarely they might, but they can delay the fuck out of it. And then behind the scenes, the glue that's holding it all together is mostly just very angry Scottish people shouting at others, desperately trying to hold this country together. You're a fucking omni shambles, that's what you are. You like that coffee machine, you know? From bean to cup, you fuck up. You're a real boring fuck. Sorry, I know you disapprove of the swearing, so I'll sort that out. You're a boring F star star cunt. You breathe a word of this to anyone, you mincing fucking cunt, and I will tear your fucking skin off, wear it to your mother's birthday party, and rub your nuts up and down her leg whilst whistling Bohemian fucking Rhapsody, right? That even with all of this complicated bullshit, we still have political parties on top. See, while the Yanks have made it a bit easier on themselves, we're only really having two parties that actually fucking matter, the Democrats and the Republicans, we've got a fair few more in the mix. Our equivalent to the Democrats is, of course, the Labour Party, who have roundly fucked the country anew by spending so much that they've increased our national deficit to the point where I'm fairly certain our firstborn children are now part of the repayment process. Which, to be fair, as long as it gets them out of the country, I don't give two shits. You might remember such greatest hits as... Helping to kick off the Iraq war by sucking up to George Bush and trying to find non-existent WMDs. Selling off 58% of the country's gold reserve when the price of gold was at a 20-year low. And of course, ushering in the age of poverty and recession. Yay, that bullshit that killed my future. Of course, all of that has changed now, seeing as Christ himself has risen again in the form of new Labour leader, Jeremy Corbyn, who seems to have a good head on his shoulders and the kids love him. Although, you know, his policies get drowned by the fact that his own party seems to hate him almost as much as the media does. 
What he's really done is make a lot of grandstanding promises that he's failed to keep for varying reasons, and now he just kind of hangs around on the fringes of the government, promising he'll get into power as if he isn't some frail old man who failed to get the job done. If Labour is the left-hand side of our political spectrum, then Conservatives is anchored firmly in the right, basically being the party of by the rich, for the rich. Intent on shitting on the little guy and refusing to pay nurses a fair wage, these are the real shitheels of our political structure. The ruling elite have made it a habit of buddying up to their friends in big business and generally being a big fan of the upper class, and their greatest hits include putting a real-life Muppet in the form of Boris Johnson into the position of Foreign Secretary, and not even seeing how fucking hilarious that is. Having a Prime Minister who recreated a scene from Black Mirror back in his days at Eton. Desperately trying to get the Remain vote, but then when that doesn't work, fucking that Prime Minister off, getting a new one that will go through with the Brexit, and taking on board all of the staff that helped make Brexit happen. You know, by lying about it. Okay, let me just explain that last point when I say about lying to get the Brexit vote. This is something that actually happened during the campaign. Oh, hello, Boris Johnson here, and if you vote for Brexit, then we're going to give £350 million pound that we do spend on EU to the NHS. We'll give it to them every week. No bullshit here. I'm to totally honest. In fact, look, fuck it. Just so no one forgets, we'll put it on a bus. No, no, I can't guarantee where that money's going, but uh, I, I never really said it was going to the NHS anyway, did I? To clarify, not to say the Tories were directly responsible for the Brexit vote, in fact they were the ones who were trying to get Remain to happen, which in hindsight probably should have fucking happened, but then if you want that vote to happen, don't put David Cameron as the face of it, he's one of the most hated bastards in the recent era. But yes, they took on exactly this stance and now we have the strong and stable, time for the hardest Brexit bitch that is Theresa May, who's just going to take all of our futures away and sell them. Yay! And then we have the Liberal Democrats who kind of don't matter at all in any real sense of the word. I mean, they've never even had their own Prime Minister for fuck's sake. They've never won an election. The most you'll know of them is when the Tories actually won the majority of the election, but not enough to actually win it proper. So they needed to pick somebody to form a coalition with. Obviously, you had a choice between Gordon, I've already fucked the country up once, Brown, and the lost little schoolboy that is Nick Clegg. David Cameron clearly saw him as the easiest pushover, took him on board, let him stand on a podium next to him for a couple of months, and then fucked him off into obscurity. So what thing were you know them from? Well, there was this amazing shit nugget that actually happened in real life. If you vote for the Liberal Democrats in this election, and I pledge I will totally abolish all tuition fees, and education shall be free to all. So instead of abolishing tuition fees, I have decided by my own free will, and totally not because David Cameron is pulling my strings like I'm a fucking puppet, the tuition fees are actually great and should in fact be, um, uh, tri tripled. Uh, but I'm sure that did no lasting damage to him or the party, right? Now, we do have a few other parties in this country, but they never seem to gain much prominence, um, such as UKIP, which is basically full of a bunch of old pensioners going, bloody fucking immigrants, stealing our jobs, and then death staring anybody with a tan. We've got the Green Party, which seems to have decent policies for keeping both the country and the whole fucking planet afloat, but they never get any traction because everybody labels them as hippies, and it's basically regarded as voting for Green is throwing your vote away, because... As much as people might agree with them, no one ever seems to fucking vote their way. And of course, being a United Kingdom, that's a fucking joke. We also have political parties specific for each of our little, um, I don't know, do we call them countries or regions? You know, things like Scotland, Ireland and Wales. Ireland has Sinn Féin, which is totally a legitimate political party and, you know, not what the IRA evolved into. I swear I would never make that connection. Ugh. The Scottish has the SNP, which is basically the Scottish Nationalist Party, and they're led by a character from Chewing the Fat in the form of Nicola Sturgeon, who is somehow still in power despite her only real focus being on Scottish independence, Braveheart style. 
and getting absolutely fucking nowhere with it. And the Welsh have plaid simu. Oh god, I can't even try and pronounce that. They have this. There you go. Um, which I, I don't really know anything about. I did some research. Still don't know that much about. They're pretty chill. Like, you know, Ireland kicks off about some stuff. Scottish kicks off about some stuff. And then Wales just sits there pumping out, you know, wool, sheep, and amazing singers just being chill as fuck. So, so yeah, they're just kind of there. Hi, hi Wales. Nice to have you here. Didn't actually know you were still here. So there we go, that was a pretty uh, light and generous evaluation of our terrible fucking state of affairs that is UK politics. I'm sure some people are going to get triggered over how I represented or misrepresented their parties, and I'm also fairly certain I got some shit wrong. But when you're talking about a system of government that has a cat in the official position of chief mouser to the cabinet office, and yet that is not the most ridiculous fucking thing in power, what exactly is right and wrong anyway? But there we go, I would say I hope you've gotten a better understanding of how this shit works, but fuck, I, I don't think even I truly understand how this fucking country holds itself together. Oh, God.